guys, it is Jam with Mother Time. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have more crafts to share with you. If you love bead decor and rustic bead decor, wait till you see what I have in store. Plus I have a little sunflower in the mix. I like creating collections when I do crafting. So I just absolutely love this collection and I cannot wait to show you. So stay tuned. And if you are new here to my channel, welcome. I love sharing home decor, cooking and DIY here on my channel. So if those are videos that you enjoy watching, click that subscribe button below so you never miss a video. Okay, you guys, you know what time it is. Grab yourself a coffee or a tea, sit back, relax, and let's get to crafting. First up, I'm going to make a beehive door hanger using a piece of foam board. I love getting my foam board from Dollar Tree, but you can find it at the craft store as well. So I first draw out a beehive on my foam board and then cut it out with my rotary cutter. Next, I spray the front of the foam board with spray adhesive, and then I flip it over on a piece of fabric and smooth it out. I'm using homespun fabric for this project. You can use any fabric that matches your decor. I get my homespun fabric at Hobby Lobby. Next, I'm going to cut the excess fabric, leaving about an inch so I can fold it over to the back. Next, I apply hot glue to the edge of the foam board and wrap the fabric around, attaching it to the hot glue. Next, I'm going to attach one inch strips of torn muslin on top of the homespun using spray adhesive. First, I lay out my strips so I like the placement, then I'll go back and spray it with the spray adhesive. Once I have all of my strips attached, I flip it over and attach the excess to the back with hot glue. So I'm going to make a beehive entrance, so I'm using a piece of felt and cutting it out and I'm going to attach it to the foam board with hot glue. I love making these door hangers with foam board. I've shared a bunch of them 
gingerbread tree pumpkin bunny i think there's probably a couple others i've also made too they're so easy to make of course you can hang these elsewhere you don't have to hang it on a door you don't even have to hang it at all you can lean this against something they're just super cute to make and a really good size too Next, I'm gonna add a nautical rope border. So I'm going to attach it around the edge with hot glue. Now I am using nautical rope from Hobby Lobby. This big thing of nautical rope was only $10.99, but you can also find nautical rope at the Dollar Tree as well. I also cut an additional piece of nautical rope to make a hanger and I attach it to the back with hot glue. Next, I'm gonna make a scrappy homespun bow. So I cut five pieces of homespun fabric and then I'm going to attach them together with a piece of twine to have a scrappy homespun bow. I make this very similar to the little bundles I make for my ribbon wreaths, except obviously this is just some fabric, so you can't really fluff it too much, but I just love that scrappy look and it looks super cute on this as well. I decided I wanted to give this more of a rustic look, so I sprayed it with some of the spray adhesive and dusted it with some cinnamon. Now I have it really up high so I could just dust it. I have a little duster thing too, but I couldn't find it. So I have my cinnamon up high and I'm dusting it around. Then I'm going to brush it off and tap it off and just kind of play around until I get the desired look. And I just keep spraying it with a little bit of the spray adhesive, sprinkling it with cinnamon, and it gives it a really nice rustic look. I also want to grunge up my bow so I kind of just swirl it around the cinnamon too just to kind of give it a rustic look as well. So now I'm going to make a cute little tag that says beehive with my clickable stamp. So I'm just making my tag like I do as usual. I have a piece of cardstock. I'm going to just cut out a little tag and then stamp beehive on this. I love these clickable stamps. I'll include a link for them in the description below. I'm also gonna give my tag a rustic look using Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo. I love doing this to my tags. I get my Distress Oxide at Hobby Lobby. Now I'm adding a little hot glue and adding some Spanish moss as well as my tag and the bow as well as a button. Then I'm gonna come back here in just a second and add some raffia. I couldn't find my raffia at first and then I found it. So I carefully remove my bow, add some raffia and then attach my bow back on.
and this craft is almost done i love this really pretty bow with the scrappy bow as well as the raffia and spanish moss and this is how it turned out Next up, I'm going to make some sunflower bowl filler. I thought this would be the perfect addition to this collection. So I have these little mini pie dishes. I actually found them at Hobby Lobby. I did spray paint the outside black. Then I added some hot glue on the inside and added some stuffing. And now I'm adding some hot glue around the edge and I'm going to attach a piece of homespun fabric and then cut the excess off. I'm using just some mini foil pie dishes. You can get a bunch of them in a package at Hobby Lobby. I spray painted the outside black and while the paint was still wet, I sprinkled it with some cinnamon too and then let it dry. And now I'm just trimming off the excess fabric. These are really quick and easy to make and you can whip a bunch of these up really fast. So now I'm going around working in sections. I'm adding some hot glue around the edge of the pie dish and then I'm attaching, well this one I'm doing a three inch piece of torn fabric. This fabric is from Hobby Lobby as well. I love that mustardy yellow color and I'm pleating around the edges as I go, but I'm actually gonna trim it down. So the other ones I do make, I do a one and a half inch strip. You can make this as big as you want and I just go around and I pleat it with my fingers. This is very similar to how I make my faux mini pies. I love making those too. So I just am pleating it around. So basically what I'm doing is I just gather some of the fabric and then I just pleat it down and attach it to the hot glue. So I gather a little bit and then attach it to the hot glue. And that gives you a really pretty pleated look around the edge. Once I get to the end, I cut the excess off. And now, like I mentioned before, I wanted to trim this down a little bit. So I did trim off the excess. And then the other ones I made, I did just use a one and a half inch wide piece of torn fabric. And this turned out super cute, just like this. But of course, I wanna give this more of a rustic look. So I'm gonna spray it with some of the spray adhesive, dust it with some cinnamon, and just kind of play around until I get a rustic look. And finally, I'm going to add a cute little bell with some hot glue. And just like that, I whipped three of these up. I just left one with the bell just to kind of make them a little bit different. Now I'm gonna make a tag to go along with this little collection of sunflower. So I just cut out a tag like I do as usual. I cut a piece of cardstock, make a cute little tag, add a little hole punch on the top. And now I'm going to stamp sunflower blessings on this one then i'll give the tag a rustic look using some of my distressed oxide around the edges and the color i use is vintage photo So now I'm going to fill this basket I had with some of this baby's grass. I love this baby's grass. I'll include a link for it in the description below. And then I'm going to top it with my sunflowers and the cute little tag.
I just love how this arrangement turned out with these sunflowers and looks so pretty with everything else in this collection. And I love that baby's grass too. It's such a great addition to this basket. Next up, this bee collection wouldn't be complete without a beehive. I love making these. I actually shared how to make this a couple of years ago on my Instagram page. So just grab one of these plastic planters from Dollar Tree. The one that I used a few years ago was a little bit different. I actually liked that one a little bit more, but I had this one on hand, so I always like to use what I have first. So I'm just adding hot glue and just working in sections, adding some nautical rope. Again, you can get nautical rope at Dollar Tree, but I think you get a better bang for your buck getting like this big thing of nautical rope if you plan on using a lot at Hobby Lobby. So I just go around. At the beginning, I do use a lot of hot glue, but once I get going, I just start adding hot glue in places just continue to wrap up around the nautical rope till you get to the end and the fun thing about making these is you can use whatever size planter you want or that you have on hand you could even make some smaller ones which would be really cute for a tier tray Once I get to the end, I trim off excess nautical rope to make a loop hook on top. I just add some hot glue and then tuck in the end piece. Next, I cut a circle out of a piece of felt and I'm going to attach it to the beehive to make a little entrance. Next, I add hot glue around the edge of the felt and I'm going to attach some nautical rope. And of course, I want to grunge this up as well. So I'm gonna spray it with some of the spray adhesive and dust it with some cinnamon. I'm gonna do a few rounds of that until I get a very rustic look. Next, I'm going to tear a piece of homespun and attach it around the loop along with a bell and a cute little tag. This beehive is so fun to make and a great addition to your bee decor. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever made one of these too. And now I'm cutting out a piece of cardstock and making a tag. I love doing these cardstock tags because I can always customize them to the size I want. And then I use a hole punch and I'm going to stamp Be Happy. And then of course I am going to give it a rustic look using Distress Oxide on the tag. And I use Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo. And I get my Distress Oxide at Hobby Lobby. Thank you. 
then finally I wrapped some raffia around the top as well and this is how it turned out. I just love the way this looks. And continuing with the beehive theme, now I'm going to show you how I made these no sew beehive bowl fillers. I love making these no sew bowl fillers. So I have this pattern that I drew out. I'll include a link for this pattern that is on my blog in the description below, or you can freehand your own. Now I'm using a friction pen. I love these friction pens because the ink will dissolve once they get heat on them. I use them a lot for quilting. So I have two pieces of muslin fabric. I'm going to pin them together and then I'm going to cut the fabric out. Alternatively, you can pin the pattern onto your fabric and then cut it out. I just prefer doing it this way. Next, I'm going to seal the edges together with hot glue, keeping an opening on the bottom so I can stuff it and then I'll hot glue the edge closed once I have the stuffing attached. Of course, you could sew this as well. Next, I'm adding some stuffing. You can use stuffing from an old pillow or pick some up at the craft store. I like to stuff these really well and then once it's nice and stuffed, I will seal it closed with hot glue. Next, I'm painting on a beehive entrance with a little bit of black paint, just making a circle and then filling it in. And of course, I want to give this more of a grungy, rustic, primitive look, so I sprayed it with some of the spray glue, sprinkling it with cinnamon, then I'm going to dust it off and I'll do a few rounds of this until I get my desired look. Once that's done, I'm going to hot glue a piece of torn homespun and then make a cute little tag and add a button. And these are so fun and easy to make. You can make a bunch really quick. And these are so cute to tuck on a tear tray or to use as bowl filler, perfect for a dough bowl or whatever kind of bowl you have. And this is how they turned out.
So last week during my lemon crafts, I shared how to make this lemon curd mason jar. Well, it's really easy to switch it even to a honey jar. So in case you missed it, I picked up this wooden mason jar. This one is from the fall, but they usually have these out seasonally. And I'm just gonna use a sander to sand off some of the writing and then cover it with some fabric. When I covered it with one layer of fabric, you could still kind of see some of the writing. So I'm just gonna add two layers of fabric. Next I remove the twine and then I'm going to spray the top with some spray glue and wrap my fabric around. And like I mentioned before, you could see the writing with just the one layer of fabric so I'm just gonna cut another piece of fabric now. You could also paint it first, but I was trying to avoid doing any painting. So I just added a second layer of fabric and that did the trick. And now I'm just going to wrap it around the back and I'm also gonna add a piece of fabric on the back just to kind of finish it off. For the top of the mason jar, I have a piece of homespun and I'm just gonna cut that down and then I'm going to add that to the top of the mason jar and then wrap some twine that actually came on the mason jar originally around it as well to give it that cute little mason jar look. Mm -hmm. Next I tear a piece of muslin to fit on top and I'm going to spray it with a little spray glue and dust it with some cinnamon just to kind of give it a rustic look and then I'm also adding a little cinnamon to the jar as well and then I'm going to stamp it with honey jar and attach it to the top of the mason jar. And after the first time I shared this craft, I added a little bit of Spanish moss and a button to the mason jar as well. And then I'm also going to distress it a little bit more. So I'm using some of my distress oxide in the color vintage photo. And I'm just going around the edges of the mason jar. And this is how it turned out. Last up, I'm going to make a rustic, fresh honey sign. I'm beginning with this piece of wood that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to paint around the edges. I'm just adding a quick coat of paint. I am using Apple Barrel in the color Burnt Umber.
once I have the border and edges painted, I'm going to quickly rough up my printable. This printable is from my print shop. I'll include a link for it in the description below. I do print it on cardstock and I also use a laser jet printer. Using an inkjet printer may smear the writing a bit, so you may wanna test it before you use it. Now I'm adding a coat of Mod Podge on top and then I am going to completely dry it. Once my Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to place my printable on top and then place a piece of parchment paper on top of my printable and then iron the printable on top and that will make it stick to the Mod Podge. I love this technique. It really makes everything nice and smooth. So I just check, make sure it's sticking. And then once it's all nice in it here, I'm just gonna remove the parchment paper and my printable is attached. And here it is all attached and it's nice and smooth. No little air bubbles underneath the printable. I again, love using that technique. Now I'm gonna go around and do a dry brush. I'm gonna use more of that Apple Barrel Burnt Umber, just going around and giving this more of a rustic look. Now I'm gonna go around the edges and spray it with some spray glue. You could use Mod Podge as well and then sprinkle it with cinnamon and then I'm going to dab it on and brush it on to give it more of a rustic look. I love doing this technique too and I often do it with Mod Podge. So I'd add a coat of Mod Podge, sprinkle it with cinnamon and then dab it more Mod Podge on top. But I'm just using my spray glue because it's just a little bit quicker um, and it'll dry faster as well. So I'm going around the edges adding that cinnamon around and then I'm going to brush and dab it on and then just to kind of give it a really nice rustic look and then I'll spray some more spray glue on top and I'll actually do a couple rounds of this until I get the look that I want. And again, you could also add a coat of Mod Podge, sprinkle it with cinnamon and then dab more Mod Podge on top. I've done that technique as well. I just did the spray glue. And as you can see, I'm just going around, adding some of the spray glue, dusting the cinnamon and then brushing it around. And when I'm brushing it on top of the printable, I'm just going very carefully. I didn't have any problems with it tearing. I did use a thicker cardstock. I also printed this on a laser jet printer, so I didn't have any smearing. You could also add a coat of Mod Podge on top first, and then once that dries, kind of go around. But as you see, I had no problems. And then once I got the desired look, I just used my hair dryer to let this dry nice. And look at how beautiful this turned out and I just love the way this looks. Okay, you guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a big thumbs up if you did, and let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed the most. And for daily decor and DIY inspo, as well as lots of behind the scenes and stories, make sure you follow me over on Facebook or Instagram at Mother Time. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.